Hello everybody, I hope you're having a great day. Um, this is Christy with Christy Cole Artistry. Thank you for joining me. Uh, thank you to all of my subscribers. Appreciate you hanging in with me. Um, Tonight I'm going to be working on a 10 by 20 canvas, but before I start tonight's uh, painting, I wanted to show you the results of a, of a couple of the last paintings. Um, we did the one that was black with the blue and the copper and the silver and the gold, and I said that I would show it to you when it dried. Unfortunately, um, it was beautiful until um, I let it dry overnight. I was watching it. And um, I kept it, you know, level on the table and everything and covered it with a, um, a, I have this screen that I put over my paintings to keep dust and things out of them. Unfortunately, sometime it, I don't know if it was because it was so wet on the bottom, but anyway, the painting slid off the sticks and the painting slid. So unfortunately, my beautiful painting um, came out like this. So it was like this, and this whole thing, it, it just slid. It just slid. So um, the good part is, is that I have another black canvas that I can reuse, because all I need to do is put black on it again and paint something beautiful. I could just um, use this as is and do a cup pour, and that will cover it. But the painting was so pretty. So unfortunately, this is what happens sometimes. Um, the paint is really loose. And it can, you know, when you're leaving it overnight, if you're not right there, this is what can happen. So, oh well, life goes on. The next one I want to show you is our beach painting. We did the sand, we did the ocean, and then we added the 3D topping for it that's going to, to be beautiful when it's glossed. So here is that painting dry. So I want to kind of show you where our second layer is. I think you can see the pearl in it. So it kind of shimmers. And when that um, gets its high glass coating, I am hoping that you can continue to see like this uh, second layer here, you know, almost a 3D effect. So I'm hoping this one comes out as pretty as it is right now. So here is from the ocean side to beach. <laughs> and here is or ocean side to the beach and beach to the ocean. So that is our painting. There may be some additional um, things added to this after, um, but I haven't decided yet. I really like it the way it is. So again, another 10 by 20. I'm loving this size painting. Um, it's it's um, easily placed on a wall in an average sized house. I don't have a big house, I have a ranch. I love my ranch, you know, less steps. Um, and I just don't have a lot of wall space because of I have really large um, windows and things. So having smaller paintings that I can turn, you know, different directions, you know, like this one, it would go this way, this one's going to go vertically, um, it's great. So, again, we're going to do a black background. need to shake this up again because I just made this paint. And then I was trying to decide what colors I wanted to use. And as you know, I have my whole array of colors from um, Liquitex Basics, Academy, Artist Loft, uh, Master's Touch, I have Oahu, I have, um, geez, I can't even think, I have, uh, oh, the Deco Art Extreme Sheens and stuff. So I have, I have lots of lots of paint colors from different companies, but sometimes they don't mix very well. So sometimes I will grab, you know, paint colors and get them ready for a video, and then I will realize that, wait a minute, you know, Oahu doesn't work good with color shot, or color shot doesn't work good with most other paints. So I'll have to rearrange that. Well, tonight, I thought I had my colors picked, and then I looked at them and I went, no, I just did a painting that had, you know, blue, purple, um, and using black. So what I think I'm going to do tonight is I want to use my black background. I want to use some of my white with cell crater so we can get some uh, cells. But I think I just want to randomly pick from my pile of cups. So as you know, I have 
all these cups of paint. And these are all colors that we have used on paintings recently. And I have a lot of them. Okay, so I think I'm just going to pick from these and we're going to create something out of those. And if we needed an additional color, then I'll pull from my bottles. But right now I think I want to start using some of these up. So I have some gold, I have some copper, so we're going to use those because again we want cells. Uh, there's not enough of this blue, so I'll use that for a touch up on something. Not enough of these two greens, so we'll hold off on those. Not enough of this. See, this is why we look at this. Not enough purple. Um, oh, this is Cell Creator White, so I'm going to leave that because I need that for um, our Ocean Pick painting if I need to touch up anything on there. Now I have some yellow, I have some blue, I have some turquoise, I have some orange, I have pink, I have purple, and that one, you can tell that these are getting too old because the container is starting to sink in and when you open this it's going to smell like rotten eggs so I'm not sure I want to use that one. I have this is a blue from a cup pour that didn't work that we uh, picked up off the canvas. Same with these two purples and then we have these sap green and the, or this sap green and this bronze. I'm not going to use bronze and I'm not going to use the green. So that leaves us with pinks, purples, gold, copper, orange, turquoise, yellow, that's not going to go together. That's not going to go together. That's not going to go together. And that doesn't go together. This doesn't go with these. Nope. Nope. So, we are left with these two choices. Do we go kind of light pastelis, or do we try the orange, the yellow, and the green with black and cell creator? So, since this is not live and you can't tell me, I have to make that decision. I would love to go with these blues and the pinks and the gold and the copper, but um, I don't want them with black. I would save these for white. So, see how easy that was? We eliminated it down to, here's our color palette for tonight. Never use these colors together, have no idea what they're gonna look like, but that's what we're gonna try. So, let's Put them out the way we think. Now, I don't know if we should use, okay, let's put these in front. I don't know if we should use both copper and gold. Now, I think the gold is too close to the yellow. Looks great with these two. I think the copper is kind of close to the orange, but looks great with these two. So I think we should use copper. And I think we'll save the gold for maybe our lighter painting. Okay? So if anyone disagrees with me, please let me know in the comments what colors that we had over here that you would have preferred to see, and I will certainly do another painting using those. Okay, my copper, my lid's coming off because I've got copper all over me. So, yeah, the lid was coming off. So what I'm going to do before I get going too far here and get myself all messy, I'm going to move these other paintings out of the way. Okay. Now, the other thing I wanted to tell you guys before I get too far is that the um, this painting um, I had tried to do the rest of what I wanted on here and it didn't look good so I took it off and let it dry and now I've got this ready to do my, my, my line here. I need to do my shadowing here and then decide what I'm going to do down here. What I wanted to do down here didn't, didn't look good. So I'm going to be turning this painting this direction if that makes sense. Okay? And I think I showed that on another video. But I did try to finish it and I, like I said I didn't like it so I just wiped it off and we're starting again right there. Okay? Lastly, okay, lastly is our fiery, fiery planet on blue. Of course, all the blue and everything is dried. Um, I started doing some 
shadowing on the fiery planet. Now what I need to do is do my lights, darks, and there's something going to go here. And then we've got to do some stars and things like that. These take longer to do. Um, I am not an airbrush person. I have an airbrush. I'm learning how to use the airbrush, but um, it's taking me a little bit of time. So I have all my airbrush equipment over here. And this is one of four airbrushes that I have, my little compressor. But um, I haven't quite mastered it, so I'm trying to learn that first before I go and use it on this uh, planet paintings. And like I said, I haven't mastered it yet. Um, and I tried to do it by hand, and it just doesn't come out the same way it will once I can get the airbrush to work for me. That, if, I think some of you may know what I'm talking about as far as the airbrush goes. You need to have that light spray um, to do the shadowing um, to make it really look like it's a planet that's floating. And I'm not there yet. I'm hoping to be soon. So I'm hoping that those planet paintings will be out soon. All right, let's get started. All right, so I have leveled the canvas. We're going to put on our black base. My black base is um, Artist Loft mixed with Floetrol and water. And I did just mix these up last night. Um, I made myself two jugs of these so that I wouldn't have to do it for a while. And I think I'm just going to, yeah, let's use, let's just use the spatula. It's a small canvas. And I do have some really, you know, I've been doing a lot of smaller canvases. I have some larger canvases, but I honestly, I'm waiting until I can get the airbrushing down so that I can do a really nice large space painting and uh, I want it on a really large canvas but I, I have to learn how to do this airbrush first. I was actually wondering if there were like classes out there that would teach you how to do it because I'm one of those people that has to touch things to do it, so watching it on YouTube has been okay, but I don't know if I have the technique down because there's nobody to tell me if I'm doing it right or wrong. So I was thinking about contacting Michaels, um, my local Michaels, because I shop there all the time, and they do a lot of art classes and if you suggest one they will try to you know try their best to get interest worked up on it and then they'll do a, a class so I'm going to talk to them about that once we get all this Mayo Clinic stuff done okay so I, I use the spatula and now I'm just going to Make sure I've got some kind of color on my sides so that when we have the blow over, it does run down the sides. Because if it doesn't, we'll have a problem. And this canvas was leveled. Um, like I said, I always level my canvases, but sometimes once you pour the paint on, they, um, they pull to the center. They kind of have a mind of their own. All right. So our black is on, I'm going to torch the bubbles, I do see missing spots, so let's torch the bubbles and then we'll look and see where we need to fill in. And torching the bubbles does two things, number one, it ensures that you don't have, um, um, if you were on like a white canvas or uh, any canvas, but if you're on a white canvas, you really notice it. If you so that you don't have those little pinholes of um, spots that don't have paint. 
because those will show big time when the canvas dries. Um, the second thing for me is when I torch the bubbles and I know that I've gotten them all, I get this beautiful mirrored almost finish on the canvas and it's so much easier to see if there's anything missing or you know just to have it perfect before I start adding the other colors. So I saw after I put that on there that I had some missing spots and now I see that I have some bubbled areas. Just gonna kind of get that paint on there. And for me, I know I, I I have a lot of paint on my canvas, but for me, um, it works better if I have more. You know, I don't want to be stingy with the paint. I want it to come out right, so I will use more than I need most of the time. And if it's a color. Um, when it runs off onto the mat below, I can still scrape that up if there's a lot, and I put them in these little cups for use later on. You know, I don't care that the color is a little off, or, you know, sometimes I just need a dark color to go with something. I will go ahead and use the leftovers to help me fill in a base, you know? Okay. Still have a couple more bubbles. All right. Okay. So we decided on these four colors. Plus, I'm going to use some of my white um, with cell crater and see if we can get some cells in these colors. And we'll see what happens. Wiping off my spatula. So take good care of my equipment. That means wiping off my spatula. Alright, here we go. First, I think, so I'm thinking about these colors and I'm thinking about when I blow them out, what will be the sort of outside um, color that will be the the um, shadow. And I like bronze, or I like, you know, the, the metallics as the shadow. I just don't know, thinking about that one painting that we just, I just showed you that the copper, copper was on top and it kind of got lost. So I think I'm going to start with the copper, okay, because I really believe that the copper would look best as the highlight in the background. Okay, so that's my thought process. All right, I've stirred it up, and I'm going to start, and I'm going to put that as our first color down. I'm starting from right to left. Oopsie. Okay. And if this if this canvas was a little bit larger, I might have put like an extra sprig out. But it's not. It's a small canvas, so um, I think we'd take away too much of the white space um, if we tried to do that. Okay, so there's our copper. Now, co orange on top of copper is just going to get lost, right? So I'm going to switch the colors around, and I'm going to put the aqua... Um, I'm trying to think what this color was. If this was my... I think this is my turquoise green. Yeah, I think this is my turquoise green. And I may have put some cell crater in here or some pearl medium, maybe? I don't always remember what's in these cups, and I don't write it down because I, I might have it... I might have been turquoise green. On the next painting, I might have added um, some uh, medium pearl magenta or something, you know, something like that, so they change. Alright, but let's put the turquoise on next. Okay, I don't know why I pour so much at that end. 
Might have to flip the painting around. All right, and I always put my lids right back on and then wipe off the cups because I want to be able to use them again until they're gone. Sometimes I just need like a drop here and there. Okay, now my next thing is we've got yellow and orange. Now, the orange next to the copper I didn't like, but I don't know that I want the um, the orange next to this close to the blue either. So I'm going to go and add the yellow now and put the orange on top of the yellow because orange and yellow will look good and um, turquoise and the or yellow and turquoise will look good and orange and yellow will, will look good as well. So let's put the yellow down next. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to be very careful when I put the orange on and try to keep it on top of the yellow. Because I don't know that the orange and turquoise will look that nice blended together. This one needs stirring as well. And this one is my... I had the tube out because I was painting with it on that other painting. It is my, I think it's my Master's Touch orange with, uh, yeah, with pearl medium in it. All right, so let's use, again, on top of the yellow. Because I don't think the, turqu oh, the turquoise and orange would look great together, but we'll see. Now that's a really weird color combination. But I'm okay with that because, like I said, we're using up little paint cups. And with the, you know, the elimination process that we did to know what paints don't for sure go together, we ended up with this. So here we are. We are going to torch the bubbles. Because I did some pop up but not a lot. I tried to stir them gently so that they wouldn't come up. Okay, here's the weird part. So my thought is I don't want white just shooting down the middle. So I'm thinking because again I'm trying to get some white cells to pop up. I'm going to do my best to take the white into the blue. Okay, into this turquoise. And that way I should get cells, if I do this right, I should get cells in the copper and the blue. Um, and the natural cells should come in the yellow and the orange, just from the fact that the orange has the uh, pearl medium and the yellow is a lemon metallic yellow. If I didn't say that, it is. Okay, I'm gonna torch one more time. Whoop, wrong torch. There you are. Torch one more time. Because that will also help the cell creator. And I can already see stuff going on. All right, so what I'm going to do now is the way I'm going to blow this out, I'm going to start out with the flower hair dryer because it's small. Um, and I'm going to try to shoot these out first and then I'm going to try to ripple the center and I might even just run that through with a, a stick or something. Okay, here we go. Okay, so I did the cell crater portion. I love it. So now I'm looking at this, and I'm like I said, I'm thinking I just want an accent swirl in the center. I love this. It almost looks like leopard spots. So there's several ways I can do this. I can do this with a brush. I can do this with a foam brush. I can do this with a stick, like so. Um. I am thinking I'm going to try a brush and see what happens. Okay, so what I want is, 
And I have to be careful not to drag the black up into here either. Well, at least not too much of it, I guess. Okay, it's not quite working how I was hoping, but let's run it once and see what happens. Nothing we can't fix if we don't like it, right? Okay. Okay. So we got, we did get more black in there than I was hoping for. I have a hair in there I'm trying to get rid of. Sue. So. Hmm. I have to think about this for a second. Because I'm thinking that I don't really care for that. Let me see if I can get some of this turquoise to come up and help us out here. Hmm. Nope. Okay, do you guys see what I see? The orange exactly, or did exactly what I was fearing it would, and that is blend with the turquoise and not look pretty. So I'm going to absorb as much of this orange and yellow as I can. Because I don't like it. at the other colors just to see if any other colors that we had in our pile would would have looked nice in here and I don't think so so my plan is to go ahead and since we have enough of the color to fill the center back up with the turquoise torch the bubbles out of it and then we'll see what happens. We may run some uh, we may run some of the cell creator in there to give us a little more cell action. You know I wasn't sure about the orange. I wasn't sure if orange was gonna go with the turquoise. Sometimes I watch people do some crazy color combinations and they come out absolutely gorgeous. I just don't like this. And if you agree or disagree, let me know in the comments. Um, or if you knew this was going to happen. Because I have tried different paints from different companies I've tried them layered numerous different ways, and every time they come out differently, and sometimes they just surprise me. They come out gorgeous when I think they're not going to. Sometimes they just come out terrible when I think they should look beautiful. There we go. So we're filling our turquoise back in. Still got this little like edge here that's I'm gonna use my actual hand on this because it works better. So you just take your finger and you can absorb the colors you don't want. And move the other colors where you want them. It's a lot of fun, actually. So I'm thinking now, I 
I've got, you know, this beautiful ribbon of blue in here. I'm gonna, I'm taking out what I see as yellow and the orange underneath because I don't want that to pop through. And have some random blue, or random yellow spot on, in here. Get that to flow over. Okay, so we've got our ribbon in there. And I think I want, one thing I want is to get this edge fixed. And then I think the second thing I want is I need to prop this up. It feels like it's sliding this way. I don't know if you guys can tell that or not, but um, I'm going to prop it up over here in the hopes that it starts to slide back that way. All right, let's look at this side. Oh, see, this side already is run down nicely. Beautiful. I really like this, though. I just, I, I feel like I still need something in the center here. And I kind of want to run a bead of the white in the copper. I did the copper first and then I put the white on. So I think I'm going to run a bead of copper and a bead of white. All right, I'm going to try to do this lighter than last time. to blow this out yet. It's easy to do the white because the white's in a squirt bottle. Okay. All right, this is going to be fun to blow out. All right, covering out my paints. Moving them out of the way. All right, let's see if we can blow this out gently. blowing off evenly. And I have this little spot here that is very um, sharp. I want to round it off a little bit. That's prettier. I love this. This is really cool. I love the cells that are happening and I'm glad I put the turquoise in the center because now I'm getting that turquoise and white explosion. It's really pretty. Um, so I'm going to grab the camera and bring you down, and then I'm watching this. I'm going to scrape it right now. Um, so I take my, I have skewers, I have popsicle sticks um, that I use, and I scrape the underneath with those. Since this is a canvas where I don't have the really big push pins in it, because I ran out of them, um, I'm going to go ahead and scrape this now. I want it to stop running off the canvas. So I'm going to scrape all this extra paint off. That way I make sure that if there is some yellow and orange underneath here, um, it's not going to get pulled out, the can you know, so that we can see it again. I think we got it all, but you never know. See? Scrape all this extra paint off to stop this from continuing to flow off the canvas. I like this. This is really kind of cool. Wow. I am kind of a turquoise fan though. Blues, turquoise. Some of my favorite colors. Okay, I'm going to grab the camera. I want you to see this while it's wet. I will, um, of course, let it dry and then. Okay, I decided to start you in real close because I think it's so cool. So I'm gonna go down, and here's that black that I was talking about, and look at it, I've still got things popping through here. So 
so I'm just gonna watch that. I might leave that cute little curly cue because when it dries it'll be in there. But look at this. I love these cells. The cells are gorgeous. So I'm just kind of running up the painting so that you can see the cells on both sides and then I'll show you the whole painting. I don't often like to use Cell Creator, but um, lately I've been seeing the benefit of it. So I've decided to start using it when I feel that I need this cell creating that happens here. Look at up this, this corner. See all those little faint lines? I know they're hard to see, but you'll see them once the painting dries. Unless they fall off the canvas, which I hope not. All right, let me bring you all the way up so you can see the whole thing. I think it's really cool. I don't know. Since I do these paintings for you guys, if you would let me know in the comments what you think of this one. That would, you know, do you like the colors? Um, we started off with five colors. Copper, orange, turquoise, yellow, and white. We had to take off the orange and the yellow because it just didn't look good. And this is what we ended up with. So I'm curious to know if you liked it with the orange on there, should I have messed with it, just left the orange and yellow, or do you like the way it is now? So, thank you for watching my videos. Thank you to all my subscribers for sticking with me. Like I said, I do these paintings for you, so if there's something that you would want to see that I haven't done yet, um, just let me know in the comments. And uh, as soon as I get a chance, I will try it out. I have so many colors so I can you know do a lot of different colors so just let me know and until my next video take care of yourselves and take care of each other bye